Hey everyone, Mr. Fransky here. Uh, we're going to take a look at a screencast today for 4.8. 4.8 is mainly just doing uh, the packet about the right triangle trig word problems that you have. It's a yellow packet. Uh, but I entitled it Don't Give Up because in general with these problems, it's easy to just say, I have no idea how to start this. Um, you just have to attack it from different angles, keep trying to do things, introduce new variables, and see if you can make this work. So let's take a look at uh, some bell work for some stuff we've been doing. So we got some inverse uh, sine and cosine things here, and also some uh, solve for x using some SOHCAHTOA. So if you want to try these on your own, you can, um, and we'll try them together. So let's take a look. So sine inverse of negative root 3 over 2. So remember sine inverse uses the right side of the circle. Negative root 3 over 2 is down here. That's negative pi over 3. Our cosine of 0. So we're asking when is cosine 0 on the top. Cosine is 0 right at the top of the circle. That's a pi over 2. And now let's see here. Tan inverse of negative 1. Tan inverse of negative 1 is right here. So this is going to be uh, negative pi over 4. The sine value there is negative root 2 over 2. So this is cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2, which is going to happen over here at 3 pi over 4. There we go. Okay, hopefully we can still do this here. We have enough room. Okay. So let's see here. This first one, we have uh, we have the opposite and adjacent are in our kind of problem we're trying to do here. So I'm going to use tangents. We have tan 50, opposite over adjacent, x over 8. Multiply both sides by 8. x is 8 tan 50. Now, one thing you have to make sure is that you're in degree mode on your calculator. There's a DRG button on those scientific calculators. Make sure you hit it until it says DEG in the bottom part of your screen. So you hit 8 tan 50. Uh, I'm going to go over my calculator in a second after I get all three of these kind of written out here. So the next one, uh, here we uh, are dealing with the opposite and the hypotenuse. So they're going to do sine x is equal to 4 ninths. So then to solve for x, it takes sine inverse of both sides. So x is going to be sine inverse of 4 ninths. Right, because sine inverse undoes the sine function. Over here, I'm going to have cosine x is 10 elevenths adjacent over hypotenuse. So then x is going to be cosine inverse of 10 elevenths. There we go. Oh my goodness. Way too far ahead. Okay. So cosine inverse of 10 elevenths for that last one. So let's take a look at a few of these problems and just see how we did. And go to my calculator. So we have 8 tan 50. 8 tan 50 is going to be, let's see, I make sure I'm in degree mode there. Perfect. 9.53403. Uh, sine inverse of 4 ninths, 26.3878. And cosine inverse of 10 elevenths, 24.62. Not too bad. All right, moving on. So, uh, some more exciting problems now than just using some Sokotoa stuff. We're going to be using Sokotoa on all the problems in this packet, uh, but kind of with some a little bit different flair. So, I like to use this example. Let's say, um, so at Edina High School, we have EPAC kind of sticking up out of the middle of the school, right? So, you have like the rest of the school building, and then you kind of have EPAC sticking up out of it, right? So um, I've always kind of thought about this as being kind of an interesting little experiment. But if you think about the soccer field out front, right? So I don't know how wide the soccer field is, but let's say it's um, 100 feet wide. Okay, I think it's probably a little wider than that. I'm not really sure, but we don't. We want to know how tall EPAC is. Okay, so we want to know how tall. Oh my goodness, we want to know how tall EPAC is. But the problem is we can't like measure it, right? We can't, like, take a ruler and see how tall it is. And also, like, it's nice if we can get right up to a building. So if you want to know the height of a building, you can get right up to it, and then you can walk a certain distance away, and you can measure, like, the angle theta. So if you know what x is, you know what theta is, you could use tangent to be able to find the height. But the problem with this is EPAC sticking up right out of the middle, so we can't get right up against it, right? We can get up against the building, but we can't get up against EPAC itself. So, the problem here is basically you could stand on one side of the soccer field, you can stand on the other side of the soccer field, and you know how wide the soccer field is itself, and you get two different angle measures. Right? You get two different angle measures to the top of EPAC. Um, there's this uh, little uh, machine, I don't know if you call it a machine, it's a tool um, called a, oh goodness, what's it called? It's not chronometer. I don't know, but it's a, it's a protractor basically with a straw on it. And you can look through the straw, and then you can hang a string down. Usually, 
you hold, have that protractor on the bottom. If you have a spring down and you change the angle, you can see what angle you're looking up at. But anyway, it ends up making the situation where you have two different measurements. You know, there's 100 feet between. Now, let's say that one of the measurements gives you 30 degrees and the other one that's going to be slightly larger. Let's say that uh, this measurement over here gives you, um, let's say, like 33 degrees. Okay, these are made up numbers, so we're probably going to get a weird height, but it's okay. We want to know the height over here. So, um, when you have problems like this, there's lots of other variables you want to bring into it, right? I don't know this angle right here. I don't know this distance right here, right? So, writing down variables for these things, I think, is important. Right here, let's see, this is going to be a 180 minus 33. So, this angle right here would be, what, 147. Okay, you also find this angle up here, lots of other ways that you can do this. But now what you want to do is you want to set up a couple ratios that are going to be able to solve for x and for h. So what I know is that um, tan 33 is going to be equal to h over x, opposite over adjacent. Now this is the weird one, right? How about, because this is a right angle right here, right? How about tan of 30? What's tan 30 equal to? h over 100 plus x. Look at that. Now what we have is two equations with two variables. That's kind of your goal in all these problems, to get two equations with two variables and to never give up. All right? Keep trying until you get two equations with two variables. Then you can solve for one and put it in terms of the other. So what I'm going to do here, lots of ways to solve this problem, but I think the easiest way to do it is to um, solve both of these for x and then set them equal to each other to solve for h. So let's solve this first one for x. So if you do the swap property, right, you can use that lots in this guy. So I'm going to swap the tan 33 and the x. So x is h over tan 33. There we go. And then for the other one, if we swap them, I'm going to have 100 plus x is equal to h over tan 30. And then I'll just subtract 100 from both sides. So x is equal to h over tan 30 uh, minus 100. And now we're going to set the two equal to each other. So let's do that here. So we have h over tan 33 is equal to h over tan 30 minus 100. And now I think it's kind of an ideal point to uh, go into decimals with these, or you can leave them in tan, right? But it, it seems like the algebra gets kind of weird if you keep things here. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go over to my calculator. I'm actually going to change these to values. So we have uh, tan 33, and I'm still in degree mode. Notice that's going to be pretty important right there. So tan 33 is 0.649, and tan 30, that should be root 3 over 3, but it's 0.577. Okay, so I might write those out. So we have 0.649 for tan 33. So I have h over 0.649 equal to h over, what was it, 0.577 minus 100. Just makes the calculations a little easier later if you do that now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have to try to solve for h. So uh, to do that, let's see how we want to do this. I would probably subtract, I would, let's add the 100 and subtract the h over 0.649. So we have 100 equal to h over 0.577 minus h over 0.649. Now we're going to uh, have this h in common, so we're going to factor it out. So do 100 equals h times 1 over 0.577 minus 1 over 0.649. Let's figure out what that is. Okay, so I'm going to go 1 over, I'm going to just go up and grab those values. 1 over 0.577 minus uh, 1 over 0.649. Gives me 0.192. So we have 100 equal to 0.192 times h. And now we should divide by 0.192. So 100 divided by that answer, and I think we're going to find out that my made-up numbers don't work out great. So it's 520.33. So the height of this, that is about, uh, what, 50 stories? <laughs> 520.33. I don't think EPAC is quite that high, but maybe, right? Okay, so clearly making up numbers sometimes doesn't work out real well, but that's okay. The math is sound.
So I think that that was the kind of right moment to change into decimals. If you keep it in TAN 33 and TAN 30, you have to kind of use some unique parentheses and stuff in order to be able to get an expression for H. Um, but as long as you get it, you're going to be okay. Now, some of these problems you have to struggle with a little bit because the algebra gets kind of messy. And the point of this is really to make you think and stretch your brain in new ways. So try these problems. Um, you'll notice that there is a link, I think, that just has solutions to these or just answers. So see if you can get the answer, and then don't look at the solution until you really need help for where to get started. Because um, these problems, you kind of have to be innovative and creative to try to think of how they work. So on that note, um, there are a couple, a little bit of vocab that you're going to have to know for some of these problems. Those are angle of ascent, ascent or elevation, elevation, T-I-O-N. Elevation. You're also going to have to know angle of depression or descent. Those are both you should say the same. Way. So descent or depression. Okay. So easiest way to do this is to say, let's say you have an airplane flying. Here's my little airplane. Some people have told me that my airplanes look like flying bread. So more like a flying baguette than an airplane, I guess. So you're introducing here the flying baguette. Here it is, the flying baguette. There it is. Yay. Okay. So, uh, flying baguette, let's say, is landing. Okay. And there's a person over here looking at it. The person looking at it, the angle, if you look straight ahead, the angle that you sweep through to look up at the plane. So, sometimes what I tell people is, like, put your fingers right at your eyes. It's like, if you're looking like this. Okay, so let's say this is like a side profile. So if you are looking directly forward, if you look up, the angle that you look through to look up, that is your angle of ascent. Okay, angle of ascent or angle of elevation. If you look down from the plane, if you look down from the plane, this is the weird one, the angle of depression or angle of descent is right there. Okay, so the angle of descent is that guy right there. It is not in here. Okay, the reason for that is because, think, if the angle gets bigger, if you are decreasing at a steeper angle, that's going to increase this angle right here. It's not going to increase the angle inside here. This is nothing. This has no name. Now, for the geometry experts out there, these two lines are parallel. These are alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles always have the same measure. So the angle of ascent and angle of depression are always the same. Kind of cool. Okay, so these are just um, things that you're going to hear about quite a bit in the packet where they talk about angle of ascent or angle of depression. Just wanted to make sure that you had seen those, okay? So if the angle of, uh, of elevation is like, let's say, 20 degrees, that means that the angle of depression or angle of descent is also going to be 20 degrees. Okay, it's important to put there. Now, to, you can figure this angle out by using that, right? Because this would just be 90 minus 20, it'd be 70 degrees. And usually that's the useful one to use this right triangle right here. Um, but you have to know where the actual angle of descent or angle of depression is. It's not inside the triangle, it's outside. All right. So what else can you use on these problems? One thing you can use is drawing more triangles, right? So like the one triangle that we had for EPAC kind of looks like this. We ended up drawing in that extra triangle on the side because we needed a right triangle to be able to solve that problem. So don't be afraid to draw in more triangles. Sometimes you just have like a random line segment, make it a triangle, right? Make it a right triangle because that's how you use SOHCAHTOA. Another thing you can use is because you have right triangles over here, remember a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So sometimes you don't have to use trig. If you have two sides of the triangle to find the third one, just somehow solve using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Last thing that is really helpful is the swap property. This is, I use this uh, word in kind of two cases. One is if I, if I have like x equal, no, let's do like, um, so like 5 equals, I don't know, 20 over x. The way you can solve for this is by switching the 5 and the x, right? Because you're really multiplying by x and dividing by 5 to be able to do this. But you end up with x equals 20 over 5. Another way that I often call the swap properties, so let's say you have like a 10 equals 20 minus x, something like this. If you add x to both sides and subtract 10, you have x equals 20 minus 10. Just 10, right? Okay. So swapping in terms of subtracting one quantity, you add it and subtract the other across an equal sign, or if you have a division like this with something in the denominator that you want to swap over to here, you can do that as well. That's more useful if you have like, I don't know, 5 equals 20 over 2 minus x maybe. 
if you can swap those two sides, right? Because thinking about this can be kind of challenging, but if you just swap them, 2 minus x equals 20 over 5, which is 4, and then you could swap again, actually. This is a great example. So now you could swap the x and the 4, right? 2 minus 4 equals x. So you have negative 2 equals x. Okay. So just a few more useful things for tackling this, uh, this yellow packet with all these word problems. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, you, the, we'll, we'll talk more through some of the yellow packet problems the next time I see you guys. So not a big deal if you have a couple that you're struggling with and can't quite get. Love you guys. That's why I'm here. Have an excellent day.